Hello, my soccer universe. Yes, I'm wearing my pink Lask jersey, and this is as much a political statement as it is celebrating that Lask won another game on the birthday of the coach. Uh, why political statement? Today are elections in Austria, and the party that I'm voting, they have the pink colors. It's kind of the liberal party in Austria, so let's have it all, all at once. I hope they get a good result today, and we're not getting a xenophobic government again. Keeping fingers crossed. But I'm not talking politics today. Uh, I want to talk about the games. I watched yesterday a little bit about that and, you know, um, do it again. Uh, one big video where I record one part on Sunday morning, another one Monday morning, then slam it all together to get a nice video out for you guys to kind of summarize my soccer weekend. Um, yeah, how about I... Should have probably watched some rugby yesterday and today, uh, for that matter, matter as well, but just don't get to it. I, it's just a lot of stuff happening with me at the moment. But so I was thinking about uh, watching Sheffield United against Liverpool. Didn't see it because uh, I just had to take a break. I uh, just couldn't get to it. I saw that Liverpool in the highlights had many chances. Um, however, United probably defended also well and the winner. Liverpool had many chances they should take and I think Mane once hit uh, even the post should have scored one. Uh, Salah should, should have scored one. Uh, Van Alden should not have scored but he did and yeah it went through the goalkeeper who was pretty good but made one crucial error and that cost the game. So uh, Liverpool stays on a winning streak kind of uh, out of nowhere. Speaking of goalkeeping blunders, I didn't. I only saw it in highlights. But let's quickly stay in England. Um, Hugo Lloris, boy, 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 trying to dribble. I mean, uh, Spurs were I think up one nil. Serge Aurier got sent off for stupid, two stupid tackles, and then Hugo Lloris tries to be fancy with his footwork, but loses, loses the ball and gives it away to uh, Southampton, who make it one one. Thanks to Kane, they take still with a man down the 2-1 lead before the halftime and hang on to and cling on to it, i got to say. Um, Dudu Yoris, who made up his mistake. So that was basically the Premier League match day um, that I saw. I mean, I saw all the highlights of the other games, but nothing really uh, that important. And then I actually... I decided let's watch a little bit Germany the conference call and I have to say it was in interesting I mean the big game was Leipzig Schalke where Leipzig had around the 15th minute two or three glorious chances to make it one nil but it didn't happen and then after corner kick um, that was a practiced version Schalke takes the lead and shortly after they get a penalty and I don't know why the referee did take that long yes I can see that he said okay the um, Schalke attacker is falling a little bit lightly and I would, would agree so but there was clearly contact by Hadar, Haidara that after seeing it once to me it's a clear penalty it should be sure should have been given not take one minute and ten seconds or whatever it took uh, to get that off and then Schalke leads 2-0 in Leipzig and a beautiful counter makes it 3-0 and Leipzig then had in the 75th pulled one back at that moment I wasn't watching anymore um, beautiful goals were actually with Bayern Paderborn where everyone thought Bayern is going to destroy Paderborn and at the beginning it could have happened but Bayern just didn't uh, score I think there was one really nice touch by uh, Coutinho that just touched the bar that would have been a nice goal but then you know um, the goals came, especially the second one was really nice. But um, the last two goals, both for Pader uh, both Paderborn goals, were ac a actually quite something to talk about. So uh, it ended quite nicer than um, one would have feared. Uh, the other results, I, you know, I didn't follow those closely. Was that um, Gladbach? One at Hoffenheim and Leverkusen at Augsburg. The first goal was scored by Wolfsburg in their wonderful ugly jerseys. Uh, one nil as well, but uh, there's quite some movement now on top. I mean, Bayern now goes top. And then in the evening, uh, Dortmund and Bremen only play a 2-2, where Dortmund was dominant for the first half. Uh, was a goal down, but uh, yeah, they also cannot get a lot 
going these days but if we look at the table they're only three points off so nothing's lost but it's very tight on top and we'll talk about this when I do my uh, review of the weekend. My focus then shifted to Lusk, who had a relatively easy away game. It's 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 like Pölten very soon made it one nil. Um, you know this was the weakest home team against the strongest away team in Austria. Um, enough said. Uh, and a two nil at half should have been a third one for some reason we don't have VAR. Uh, the linesman who was way off judged the ball to be uh, outside the line. No, it was not. Going uh, put the cross in that the goalie would have put in his own. That's have been three nil at at the half. Uh, Hull Holland makes it um, three nil. Then right after the half, and then I think they just that's how it ended. They didn't do much more there. Um, I actually wanted to see where the, where the other games were doing, and especially the Wolfsburg game uh, against Tirol Wattens, to be honest, where they had many many chances in the second half. I mean, it was actually comically they were leading one nil. I should have. There was a sequence where they should have made it two nil, and then. Wattens gets uh, the equalizer, then Wolfsburg takes the lead again uh, through a billiard goal, but Wattens equalizes as well, and so Lusk is again in second spot, so uh, was a great day, Salzburg wins easily over um, Austria Wien, who are complete utter disgrace. They are uh, similar to Manchester United, I have to say. Uh, I watched a teeny bit of City against... Uh, uh, not City at Everton, I should say, uh, where City slammed it on the bar right early, then they get the lead, but Everton equalizes, and then I had to put the girls more or less to bed, so I didn't see much more. I was all geared up for the Derby Madrileño, and before that I saw a little bit of, I saw the highlights of Sampdoria Inter, the Alexis Sanchez show, uh, who deflected the shot from Sensi, who made it 1 0, then made the 2 0 himself, then got himself sent off for a dive. Um, Sampdoria made it, I think, 2 1 then, and then in the end it ends 3 1 uh, for Inter, who also, similar to Liverpool, ha continued a great start to the season. Juventus got an easy 2 0 win, and then I said, okay, I didn't get to watch any league. Uh, I mean, I, I was hitting myself a little bit. I should have watched maybe Bordeaux, PSG, where Neymar again gets the win. I then, uh, the Darby Madrileño, I said, okay, let's put, put at the same time. Uh, let's watch Sassuolo Atalanta because Sassuolo is usually a fun team in Atalanta too. Um, it was very quick. Gomez made two goals. Uh, it was 3 0 or even 4 0 at the half. And I know it ended 4 0 for um, Atalanta. So then it was uh, on the second screen I put Nice against Lille, but it was already the second half which ended 1-1. One, one. wasn't much. I was really f all was focused on the Derby Madrileño. Ah, I saw Barcelona a little bit against Getafe at Getafe. Uh, finally, they they uh, were playing in their yellow jerseys, which I actually really like. And yeah. They got a uh, win, a really nice goal through Suarez that was assisted by Ter Stegen with his left foot and then uh, Suarez lobs it over and they get a 2-0. This was kind of a workman-like effort, uh, but they needed to get that win and it gets tight on top of the table there. So, now we have the Darby Madrileño. Lots of anticipation. I cleared my schedule for you. I said, this is the one I needed to watch. And then it was a snooze fest par excellence. And I, I thought it was exciting when Joao Felic uh, early on uh, missed a chance. Then I know Real Madrid came and had chances, but there was not really much coming. I mean, there was one early in the second half for Atleti, then there was one for Real Madrid, I think, Bale. Benzema had a huge chance that was saved, but it was really the teams neutralizing uh, each other. And so it ends nil nil, and no harm, no foul for either one of them. They are both now sitting on top of the table, one point separating them. Real Madrid stays top. Granada with a win moves in. Atletico Madrid is third. Barcelona is fourth now. But Real Sociedad is playing today and with a win over Sevilla. So you never know what's happening there. They could move in top spot. I also saw the highlights of Valencia's win at Athletic Club. Uh, which was also a surprising result because basically Bilbao could have been on top spot as well. But we may have a new leader. If Real Sociedad wins at Sevilla, 
but that's not a given either and that might be i mean i probably will watch milan at fiorentina but that's a game that i will surely put on the second screen well that was it for my saturday and let's see what happened on sunday hello again my soccer universe well Sunday, Sunday, <laughs> I'm fired up. I'm really fired up. I keep the same jersey, but I washed it in between. So just that, that I don't know, the party did well. Fortunately, there will not be any subject. I mean, they had the best result in history, but they will not be in any new government, which is maybe a bit bittersweet, but still. Uh, at least uh, extremists lost big time. Unfortunately, the other party that I'm not so great about happy about one big time but you know politics and uh, it's my last jersey so you gotta they did well um i didn't watch that much yesterday honestly um and i'm gonna keep the game that will fire me up for very very less you can already guess about it if you saw the title um i watched lecce roma which yeah Roma got the win. It was almost an easy, easy win. After they got the one 0 they almost entirely stopped uh, any efforts going forward. Although they should have made it two 0 because they got a penalty that called out of. Uh, no, it was no miss. It was saved. Um, the one 0 through Jacko, yeah, right at the goal, goalkeeper. Um, similar to the one one goal that Ambrosio scored against uh, Lazio. Uh, I really like those Roma jerseys in white and I have to say the Lecce jerseys. Uh, it's weird because they have a yellow back, so uh, they look a little bit different. They look dark on the front and on, on the back. Uh, I overall like them. We made a weird thing. It's the shoulder yoke has on the back, a uh, little triangle protruding, which I'm sure should represent the sun. And if it does, it's a nice touch, but uh, it seems like they they're getting a little bit over designed uh, that's maybe the one thing that i i don't i, I don't like also on the pants it's a, just a little bit too much color on there i think a little cleaner look would do a whole lot good to let you but yeah that's still uh was not a great game then what did i watch then i think i watched a little bit coverage from the electors of course and then uh, i actually needed to do we needed to do stuff uh, at home, but I at least had the Leicester Newcastle game on. Yeah, Leicester got the 1 0, Newcastle got a player sent off, and I didn't see any of that in the first half. Uh, but throughout that moment, my daughter informed me there's a 1 0, and then someone uh, got a red card, and she couldn't tell me the team, but she said that a black and white player is on the floor, uh, a blue player is lying on the floor. And the black player is yelling or is upset. So I knew Newcastle got the red card and that kind of killed the game. And then it was an avalanche of goals in the second half, make it 5 0 win for Leicester. Um, pretty deserve it, I would say. Uh, Newcastle is another team that's in a mess. Absolutely. That's a team that should be. It should be near at least mid table, near, near the top where management is messing things around. And then, yeah, uh, did I watch, no, I did not watch much, then I, I, a little bit Cagliari uh, against Verona, which ended 1-1. Uh, also the Levante against Osasuna, which ended 1-1, which was weird jersey-wise, because uh, both teams had kind of bluish shades, Levante and the dark, a blue with dark red and also similar with this minty and white it was not to me it was weird let's let's put it but it was all too same-ish on the field so it was for me all about Mila Fiorentina and Sevilla Real Sociedad and I said I was, I, it was a hard task for me to decide which, which one to put on the sex actually because I expected Milan playing badly. However, yeah, Fiorentina is fun. So, okay, let's put Fiorentina on the main screen and have the other game on the side. Um, and yeah, Real Sociedad got an early lead in Sevilla. 
but um, Sevilla turned, turned around. I mean, it was a 1 1 and a half. A uh, great goal by Ocampos, who went into the box and then just slammed it from an acute angle into the net in the 48th minute. Uh, in the 80th, they, made, they hit the post. In the 80th, they made 3 1 and as the Real Sociedad, who could have become uh, leaders in the table. Uh, only managed a 3-2, but on, 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 honestly, the game was all Sevilla. Uh, so, yeah, Milan Fiorentina. <sighs> I cannot tell you how bad Milan looks. It's amazing. Amazingly bad. And, uh, and they're such a fragile team in addition. I mean, just at the second where you thought that they get something going, Chalanoglu spills the ball. I mean, they were already, uh, I mean, Chiesa going, dancing circles around the defense. And you know, they're, they're doing back heels and, and so on. And Ribéry making a strong performance. Chalanoglu loses the ball. Ribéry runs into the box. Uh, nice solo between defenders who are more like escorts there. And then, yeah, uh, the rebound. Donnarumma saves, saves, saves a shot, the rebound. Uh, I don't remember the player, but it goes to Fior Fiorentina player who is immediately failed by Ben Asser. I mean, I'm happy that Ben Asser is playing because, I mean, you need to give him the keys to the team. Uh, better than Bilia. But uh, such a stupid challenge. Absolutely stupid. 1 0 penalty. Uh, I have to play at the. Names are gone now. I'm sorry, only if they're big names. And I, I'm seething here. Uh, Fiorentina then easily should have made it 2 0. I think they even scored it, but it was take, taking away uh, rightfully so, but offside. But I have to say, Fiorentina then for the first third, third minutes, Milan was not on the field. And why is Fiorentina playing in green, by, by the way? But they did this last less, less season. Well. Then Milani finally, a little bit, you know, very timid, very... Uh, when, and, 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 and that's the other thing. They are so insecure that when they have a man advantage in a, on a quick attack, they are not going for the dangerous ball where you could switch sides, you know, a hallmark of attacking teams switch the side put them out of there no they are going for the safe pass and then it fizzles out because you lose the ball it's maddening absolutely maddening and yeah it Milan got something going but uh Piontek is a foreign object uh Leao is the only player I mean since he played at Derby he's the only player that has something going for him that's the only exciting player on there. I'm I'm tired of Suso. Last year around this time I said Suso is amazing. Suso is horrible. I cannot stand Suso anymore. Always his same trick and then he shoots it miles over, over, over the goal. I mean, if he gets a cross in, yes, it's important. Everyone knows about that. Switch it up. I mean, you're not Arjen Robben who makes the same move and scores uh, hundreds of goals. No, because you don't have the shot of Arjen Robben. You don't have the skill of Arjen Robben. I am so mad. I'm so mad at this. Um, and I'll talk about later uh, what I made. The game was basically done and dusted with the red card from Musakio. And yeah, it was a VAR decision. But if you look at it, yeah, it's pretty clear. Uh, you cannot go in like that. And that moment I knew that Milan is gonna fall apart. And they saw, uh, sure, sure enough, they fell apart. 2-0, then uh, Ben Acer gives away another penalty which was saved by Don Donnarumma which is the only other positive light in this uh, whole thing. Donnarumma is the only other... Uh, yes, he had a horror, horror game against Tur -Tur Turino but I think there is talent there. Shall I make now a slight claim for Romagnoli? Probably. The rest, forget about it. Leao, Romagnoli and Donnarumma. I think this is where you have to build your team on. Uh, I'm afraid, I mean, as great as Piontek was when he came to Milan, he has no confidence. His confidence is completely shot. And I think the way Milan is playing is also not playing to his strengths. Because uh, he's not a great passer of the ball. No, 
he has a great first touch and then he needs to shoot it but he is honestly he's he's off um, and I think he could really profit from a hard working player as it was Cotrone. I never understood why they gave away Cotrone. I understand that Cotrone was really um, uh, dissatisfied with his bench role. But to be honest, uh, he was a hard working striker. And in addition, he is our own youth product. I mean, this is a, a identification with the fans, everything there. For him, I mean, he gave his heart and soul. He, he was a, uh, yeah, he was in the vein of Gattuso, maybe not as snarly as Gattuso, but you, he always gave it his all, uh, and that was a great partnership for Piontek. I also don't under, under, understand. I mean, the whole transfer politics. <sighs> let's finish the game. Um, so Chiesa, the panel, the penalty is saved, but uh, still. Um, Fiorentini in the 78th made it 3 0. Fully deserved at that point. The Curva had left. Uh, also, I totally un un understand it. I mean, the I mean, there were 50,000 people, and all of them walked away completely di 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 disappointed. The only things that were of note is when Kevin Prince, Prince Boateng came on, he got applause, and when uh, Ribery went off, uh, he got a standing ovation because he was outstanding and this was you know a great player Leao pulls one back probably the best goal of the evening but that was never done man down and with so high confidence and also the the uh, changes that i mean <sighs> castillejo for suzo what was that Milan is in such a shit mess. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And I saw it from the first game of the season. The best game that they had was the first half at Torino. And maybe a little bit at Inter. Uh, second half of the first half. Then they completely fell, fell apart. Uh, if they would have gotten a Torino win, maybe. And and that, and that, that that's the other thing. I mean, I'm I had it now because they had three losses in a in a row. Um, the first one, yeah, deserve it, but at least there was something there. No, in the first half, the second, completely dispiriting, and the third, third one was I saw the writing on the wall. I mean, I know the Fiorentina is a fun team to watch. Uh, that were completely slammed by the draw because they had a, uh, really all the difficult games at the, at, at the beginning. But that came, that is a hell of an exciting team. Pulgar is the guy who made the first penalty. A um, hell of an exciting team to watch. Um, and I so much would like to see Kiesa in a Milan jersey. But given how Milan is at the moment, no, it's not, it's not, not gonna work. Uh, shall we sack the manager? I'm actually not, not sure. I actually think the management needs to go. Uh, and I mean most of the uh, Cassidis. I also think a uh, more experienced sporting director would help. Uh, I love Milan, they are the, uh, I love Maldini, should have to do something with Milan. I really think that Boban is a smart guy, uh, but I think they have proven that they have no idea of how to build a team. You hire a manager who plays a certain way and the manager says after a game or so, uh, you know, I don't have the players to play the system I want to play. What the... Can you do something with me? I mean, they, they were always... He wants to have those two players from um, Sam Sampdoria, Pryat and um, I think a Swedish guy. Spend the money! Spend the money, give him what he needs. Give him. I don't get this. Just, just, just because the asking price, you need to get in the Champions League this season. You're not even gonna get into the Europa League. I mean, at this moment, I'm even. Uh, this will be a relegation battle for Milan. I'm still gonna watch every, every, every game, stupid person that I am. Uh, although, you know, you can only take that, that much. I think there's talent in this squad, it's just they're not used right. And the squad is built, I mean, you have certain players that played 
actually well under Gattuso, who was constantly under fire. Uh, I, 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 I actually, at this moment, most Miller fans realize how good a coach Gattuso actually was getting a wall wall he got out of this squad. Uh, Jalanoglu is one of the most frustrating midfielders out there. He can be brilliant on one day and then he's absolutely awful like yesterday where he hmm, nothing happening there. Uh, you have a squad that is mostly slow. I mean the one thing that I was their hallmark was the defense that I think was uh, quite good until yesterday where they completely fell fell apart and I, 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 I was never really fond of Musakio uh, to begin with. And what also angers me is that you bought uh, players from Atalanta who were bright. I mean Cassier I think worked out but you bought Conti um, and, how, um, and what was the Caldara. But they were all injured! I have an injury by fit players. <sighs> There's so much going wrong at this club and it's not going to get in any way better. Uh, I don't even want to talk about the new stadium now because that, that's not a little bit sore spot for me. Uh -huh. I just think that the hiring of the coach, I mean, it sounded all good and, and so on, but that was a major mistake uh, to go for an um. I don't want to say unproven, but you know, he is a little bit like Sari, uh, a, a romantic idealist. I mean, when they said it at Derby, it's a uh, Conte is a realist versus an idealist. I knew exactly how is this going. I mean, Conte is a pragmatist. I knew exactly how, how it's going. Not only does Inter have the better players at the moment, where at the beginning of the last season, I actually thought, or maybe even too soon, I, I actually thought that uh, Milan is probably on par with Inter talent-wise on, on the squad. No, 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 not anymore. Inter is investing. They want to go some places. Uh, also kills me that Inter has, it really kills me that Inter has the highest average attendance in Italy. It's because Milan is so crap. I'm really, really mad. And it kills me that finally I have one team, Lusk, going very well, and then the other is absolutely down the drain. Down the drain. And yeah. I actually think that the manager, Giampolo, is the least problem that they have. Uh, I know he will be sacked. But he's the least problem. There is an endemic problem with Milan. You actually have to get rid of a bunch of players that no one wants to have anymore because of the shit they're playing. And you need to you need to build a team from the ground up in the way that the manager wants. Absolutely. I mean, it's just. And then Paqueta, who was also a guiding light at the beginning of the uh, year. He's a really talented player. Now he doesn't fit, fit, fit in the system. I mean, <sighs> no. I better end this video right here. It's horrible. Milan is just, just, just a mess. I actually watched in the, la the last 10 minutes of also Marseille against uh, Rennes, which didn't produce any goals. It was 1 1. Uh, but many chances. I mean, there were Mandona uh, had a couple of saves against Rennes and then uh, also. Benedetto for Marseille. It was actually fun till the last 10 minutes and uh, the commenter comment said if you just join in the 80th minute and that was me uh, the jacket as I was um, you made the right choice he more or less said I, I didn't watch the goals but yeah small consolation I cannot tell you how mad I am about Milan and this is my outlet now because I don't want to take this anger. But uh, if someone discusses Milan with me today at work, we have two Milan fans at work as well. Uh, I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna be a hell of a screaming match between me and them. <laughs> and we all enjoy. I mean, it's painful. It's really painful to watch. And I still want to have that home jersey. This is the best home jersey. And Milan has a sharp. I mean the home jersey especially. I actually like the third now too. I really hope that this guy 
world's second richest guy in the world is going to buy them uh, and get also the spending spree. Get me Messi. He doesn't want to be personal anymore. Get 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 into San Siro. Something like that. No, I actually want to have a rock solid defense. Let's see. Anyway, let me know what you thought about the games that I've been talking. Let me know what you've been watching. Uh, if you have any comments on the current Milan series situation, let me know. I think people, uh, fans of Manchester United, probably feel feel me too because they're in a similar say, say, say situation. Honestly, I think those two teams are the ones that are absolute crap uh, from management down. And yeah, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed me yelling. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos of mine. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.